Greeting to all the students. Welcome to Global Online. And as you all know, we are here for NTA UGC NET 2023 paper, 2023 year, that is paper one. And this class is a rapid revision for all those students whose exams are scheduled in this week. So it's 60 minutes, one unit. Today, the unit which we have taken is teaching aptitude. That is by me, Dr. Tripti. Before we go ahead uh, for the revision, let's first understand that exactly what does Global Online has to offer you all. So Global Online has came up with a study material for paper two, which will be consisting of following subjects. The subjects are listed on the screen. Now, this study material will be consisting of MCQs as well as it will be consisting of notes. So this uh, notes plus MCQ is a part of the study material for the following subjects which are reflected on the screen. In order to join this or to get the copy of the study material, you can get in touch with us on the given WhatsApp number. The fees is rupees 1600, but right now we are giving a 20% off. So the fees is 1280. In case if you're looking something for paper one, yes, we do have quick revision PDF for paper one, which consists of 2000 plus MCQs, updated MCQs, current affairs, short notes, previous year's questions, as well as most repeated questions. The fee for same is rupees 1699. In order to join the same or to get the copy for yourself, you can get in touch with us on the given WhatsApp number. So now without having or without wasting much time, we will go with the revision class. Please have a notepad with you, have a, a pen and a notepad so that you can write and take what are the important topics at, to increase class, in today's examination also, that is in the today's shift, what type of questions were there and how to go ahead. So first of all, before starting the topic, that is teaching aptitude, which is paper one, which is unit one, which consists of teaching learners, characteristics, factors affecting teaching, methods of teaching, teaching aids and evaluation system. In detail, if we go for the syllabus, it consists of teaching, that is the concepts, objectives and levels. Levels, there are three levels which are already given in your syllabus. Characteristics and basic requirement. When it comes to learner's characteristics, we have characteristics of adolescent and adult learner. In, uh, comprising of academic, social, emotional and cognitive characteristics, including individual difference. Factors we have learned, teacher learners, support material, instructional learning environment, methods of teaching we have, Swayam, Swayam Prabha and moves. So, teaching support system we have, traditional, modern and ICT based teaching and evaluation system we have. So if you look at the syllabus, if I'm not wrong, in the last cycle, that is in 2022, learners' characteristics was given a lot of importance, okay, as well as methods of teaching was given a lot of importance. But if you saw today's, uh, the paper which we have seen, the morning analysis which we have done, you have, you are getting the question on types of um, learning. You're good, getting the question on levels. Levels, definitely you should not leave this topic at all. You should make sure that this is revised very well. Evaluation, yes, last time also in the last cycle also, there were questions on evaluation system. Now also we had question on evaluation system and types of evaluation. So yes, you have to revise these topics very well. Now, some students are having or they are under impression that this is one of the easiest unit to crack. But if you see the level of questions are, you know, from moderate to difficult level, there is no easy level questions in case if you have not studied the syllabus very well or you have not revised. And the same at the same time, make sure that you are revising all the previous year question papers very well, because yes, that will definitely help you out with this uh, topic very well. So yes, now let's start. And I, as I said, please make sure that you're having the, the pen and the paper in your hand so that you can write and take all the important points. So coming with the concept, yes, there are uh, uh, papers where you know the definitions are not asked by whom it is quoted, but there are certain words related to definition. So you should be knowing this topic very well. So what this Morrison has told about teaching that it is a discipline process, okay, where the teacher influences the behavior of less experienced pupil that is student. So yes, the question can be uh, who has stated that, you know, teachers, uh, teacher influence the behavior of less experienced students. So yes, it can be in any twisted form, but you should know what does the, you know, what does the great authors have told about or how they have put the term teaching. 
if we talk about smith he has said that it is an organized activity which is a tripolar process where it involves the agent the goal and the intervening variables that is the, the student as a dependent variable the teacher as the independent variable and the intervening variables also uh, gage has said that it is a personal relationship between teacher and a taught that is the student it results in the behavior modification that is all round modification of behavior of a student uh, amidon has said that it is a cooperative social interaction process clark has said that it is an organized activity which results into behavior modification green has said that what a teacher does for a development of a child is nothing but it is called as teaching so you need to have a glance of these you know uh, great scholars who have defined teaching in their own terminologies in their own uh, way but you should remember what unique things they have said going ahead now how can you define teaching so yes from this you get statement questions or you get assertion and reason questions or you even get you know what does what are the characteristics of teaching or what is why is, uh, how teaching is important so yes it is a purposeful activity there has to be a purpose it is a process it is uh, teaching learning is a process and yes it is a process of providing what an opportunity to the students and students has to encash this opportunity in order to grow or to develop yes it, teaching is one of the skillful application where the knowledge experience scientific principles you know are uh, set up they are with an objective that this these knowledge experience and the principles uh, you know they are transmitted from the teacher to the student teaching is one of the planned activity where the students are you know where they understand what is expected from them and they how accurately they can be learned teaching as i said is a process which is involving the learner the teacher and other variables in a systematic way teaching is an activity that causes the child to learn to acquire that is to acquire the knowledge the skills the experience in order to it, which is required for the growth and development of the child so this is all you know is a part of what and this is how the teaching is defined in simple terms now yes uh, important concepts where this this topic was also a part of your previous year questions that is basic education the concepts and the proponents so basic education that is varda system which was you know given by uh, mahatma gandhi is learning to take place in nature and from nature that is rabindranath tagore integral education that was said by arbindo focus on spiritual aspects of indian philosophy that was said by dr radhakrishnan education to transmit uh, sorry to transform human mind that is uh, j krishnamurthy experience learning john dewey so there was a question in year 2022 also uh, according to john dewey education is what and i have included this question in one of my videos of previous year question the question was very simple according to john dewey what is education is it a social political uh, it is a which type of process so obviously it is a social process okay Exper experimental learning self education through development so this is see that's what i'm trying to tell each slide which i have added is with the concept of examination point of view so it's very important for you to make sure that you are learning all the things are very alert and you are revising it education self education through development of individual individuality was said by Mo montessori kinder uh, kindergarten focus on self activity that is said by fobel which is very common previous year question paper in some cycles no formal learning nature is the only teacher that was said by rousseau so yes this slide is very very important questions are up, questions we have seen questions from the slides coming next to is your instructor teaching models that is instructor centered or a learner centered so first we'll go with instructor centered where the focus is on instructor knowledge is transmitted from the instructor instructor here it means a teacher centered methods so teacher talks while learner passively listens so teacher is active learner is passive learner passively receive the information learner works alone over here teacher uh, works alone on what on the information which is received culture is competitive instructor re restrains the conversation yes instructor answers the learner question so that you know whatever questions doubts or queries the learner has that are to be answered by the teacher or the instructor here the emphasis that is importance is on right answer which is given by the learner 
Assessment is used to monitor the learner. So you have a summary type of assessment in order to, you know, uh, in order to understand the teacher-centered method or the instructor-centered method. The next we have is the learner-centered method, that is a student-centered method. The focus is on learner. Here the knowledge is constructed by analyzing or, you know, gaining the information, gathering the information. Teacher interact, uh, learners interact with the instructor, that is teachers and each other. Learner plays an active role. They, are, they, often, work, they often work in groups over here. Uh, culture is collaborative and supportive it is you know it is it it, it is given uh, it is definitely it is one which is you know paired or its group and definitely it is what it is collaborative learner are encouraged to take you know to ask questions to uh, have a debate to share ideas informations learner answer each other question that is peer learning happens over here Emphasize emphasis is given on generating better questions and learning from others. That is, a good uh, type of questionnaire is you know encouraged to put by the learners. And as assessment is used to promote, uh, and you know, and diagnose the learning. That is, you know, it is in the form of formative assessment. You can say. Yes. Coming to the next is your different levels. As I said, this is very important topic. You should be aware of this topic. So I have written some important points out of levels. So we have basically three levels, memory level, understanding level and reflective level. So when it comes to memory level, it is the least, you know, the, the initial stage, okay, least, th least thoughtful level, which was quoted by Herbert. It induces the habit of rote memorization of facts and information. So these are the important points which you should really remember. Okay, there are questions on these points only. The teaching learning process is like stimulus response here. That is an action for which there is a reaction. It enables the learner to produce the material which is you know required with the help of rote memorization. The evaluation system is based on oral, written and essay type of examination. Yes, good memory includes rapidity in learning, stability of retention, uh, recalling and ability to bring the desirable content as per the conscious level or to the conscious level. Coming to understanding level, the understanding level is the next level of teaching, which is, uh, you know, which is uh, thoughtful. Yes, here it was brought by Morrison. It is memory plus insights. It means it goes beyond the memorization and it tries to, you know, uh, make the student understand the principle of, you know, uh, at his understanding level plays an important part over here. It focuses on mastery of the subject rather than memorization. So here the opportunities are provided to the students, you know, to develop their intellectual behavior by putting the questions by assimilating the facts, okay, this is this can be assessed with the help of essay or objective type of questions. So what important points you have to remember who has developed this level, which is the stage, okay, what is the specific feature of this level and it, it can be evaluated based on what, you know, what type of test. Coming to your reflective level, yes, it is the most thoughtful level or highest level you can say, which was developed by Hunt. It is a problem-centric uh, approach, okay? It means that it makes or it emphasizes more on problem-solving, research approach, you can say. Yes, classroom environment here should be open and independent. The learners are motivated and they are very active in this. They, you know, they, the aim is to have the reflective power so that, you know, they can solve the problems. They can come with their imagination, reasoning skills. And yes, teacher plays a secondary role over here, whereas student occupies a primary place. Essay type of question is the way through which you can evaluate, you know, uh, the student attitude, belief and uh, involvement are also evaluated. Like what type of attitude, a belief system does a student has in order to, uh, you know, go for uh, in this particular level of teaching. Okay, Is it clear? Coming to some important concepts which are given in this particular topic. That these concepts, there are some questions, okay. There were some questions based on this topic. So, it is basically what we are talking about. It is basically, it is talking about what? It is talking about some important terms. 
these terms can be asked in some or other form of a question so let's see so education yes the first term is nothing the first term is education which is nothing but a form of learning in which knowledge skills and habits of a group are transferred from one generation to another generation that is happening you know through a, a teaching or with the help of training or with the help of you know with the help of self learning okay learning it is activity it means activities and experiences definitely which is to bring a change uh depends upon the maturity level it depends upon the various uh, you know discussion practice sessions or exercises with the help of between the teacher and the student instruction it is a delivery content by the teacher which helps the you know to understand what are the objectives of the teaching and it is uh, teaching is a wider concept and instruction is just a part of the teaching so yes instruction is nothing but a delivery of content coming to next is training that is you know uh, equipping equipping the candidates with technical skills okay as well as academic skills in doctrination this word is very very common and it has been asked in any form so it is basically a belief or an idea which a student or a, you know has to or a, a, the listeners has to accept without any you know without any form of uh, uh, critic crit critics that is it, it it is a belief which has to be accepted now teaching can be done the statement can be given as in statement of you know uh, whether right or wrong or correct or incorrect teaching can be done without indoctrination but no indoctrination is possible without teaching so you can give teaching you know you can definitely teaching can be done without any belief system but a belief system is definitely necessary a belief system is possible no no belief system is possible without teaching so if you want your students to believe a specific thing it is very very important you have to teach them syllabus is nothing but a document it is a document which talks about about a topic or a module which you are going to teach to your students and curriculum is an overall uh, course it is basically a uh, combination of all the type of experiences that results uh, into an institute in the form of academic co curricular or other types of exposure so yes somehow this terms can be a part of your statement questions or assertion and reasoning and you should know this terms moving next is magazines of teaching so when we have magazines of teaching these are the sorry these are the these are the magazines on magazines also you get you know questions so magazines comes to know uh, starts from known to unknown that is what has been known the previous knowledge coming and then coming to something which is not known to a student simple to complex start with certain simple things and then take the students to a complex complex content concrete to abstract okay which can be based on you know which is visualized in the form of concrete and then taking them to something abstract that is the larger concepts okay uh, at a later stage but then first making them something uh, you know uh, making them understand the concrete things which can be visualized by the students and then later on coming to abstract particular to general that is uh, going to some with a specific example and then coming to a general law or a principle we are even going to learn inductive and deductive method for this a different slide i have prepared then whole to a part that is a gest gest uh, gestalt psychology which we are going to do it is to uh, and understand this whole and then going to a part of it psychological that is as per the interest aptitude level the capacity the development and then taking to a logical concept or arrangement induction to deduction i said i'll be focusing very very particularly on this topic in the coming slide but yes that is nothing but arriving at a conclusion by observation a set of you know a set of statements or like uh, arriving to a conclusion after examining all the possibilities that is a deduction empirical that is something which you know which is a real uh, a field experiences that comes to that later on moves to what a rational concept a logical concept analysis that is breaking down a problem and then bringing the whole idea together that is synthesis we are going to study this in bloom's taxonomy also coming next is a concept called as micro teaching so micro teaching is nothing but a, a teacher student practice that is a teacher who a student teacher practice we can say 
which will with it's done with the reduced number of people in order to emphasize the teaching skills so yes it is it is basically to enhance the skills in the trainee teacher it is making sure that the skills are learned very well to give the confidence to the train, trainee teacher uh, to make sure that they are you know they are uh, highly individualized uh, training device is given to them so that they can they can get prepared well this is uh, it's it is incorporated with the help of practice the practicing the teaching schedule and it is not only the skill but also the technique and the method is developed with the help of this type of teaching now the time duration is basically you know uh, uh, teaching is done for 6 minutes a uh, feedback 6 minutes replanning reteaching if if required otherwise this is you know it's normally between 10 to 12 minutes okay next is the phases of teaching so basically there are three phases that is act pre active phase interactive and post active in pre active it is basically referring the first stage which refers to planning interactive stage which refers to the conduction of the uh, class and the management or the control mechanism and third third is the post active which talks about follow up and the consolidation in detail also the steps are discussed so that you know you can a uh, little bit know more about them and be prepared so pre active is called as planning stage interactive is called as implement implement sorry implementation stage and post active is called as evaluation stage there can be different names you have to remember it can come and match the following also in detail that is pre active stage it is you know to fix up the goal and to decide the strategy interactive is to diagnose the learners and take an action or a reaction against it the next is post active where the devices are uh, you know uh, uh, devices for uh, the testing is lined up and the feedback and testing happens in this particular stage so the phases you would definitely get some questions on phases you should be prepared for it okay now bloom's taxonomy yes a very important topic you definitely get questions on this you should be very well prepared with this type of you know um questions so first of all in 1956 benjamin bloom provided a guide which is used to create objectives and assessments so basically if you see in 2022 there was a question on high order and low order of thinking so if you see the that is memorize uh, remembering understanding and applying is the low order thinking skills whereas analyzing evaluating creating is the high order skills so there were questions that they give you odd man out and they tell you to find out the high order skills or low order or they may even give you straight question but you have to be prepared okay so when we talk about remembering it is all about recalling when we talk about understanding it is all about you know knowing the main idea okay and summarizing understanding in the own words applying indicates application that is problem solving technique analyzing indicates examining evaluating indicates the use of standards and creating indicates you know uh, uh, to assemble the parts of knowledge in the form of creative thinking and problem solving yes now going little bit more ahead this diagram which talks about the latest application of bloom's taxonomy that is as i said remembering the uh, recalling the facts understanding that is grasping the meaning applying indicating the use of it, information al analyzing taking apart the known and identifying the relationship evaluating that talking about examining the information and creating talking about you know use of information again it is divided into high order and low order skills you should be able to remember it very well coming to the to the words there are sometimes you know the there are different words which are used okay so uh, knowledge that is remembering is with the help of defining identifying describing recognizing telling explaining reciting these are the words sometimes you know the words can be given and they can even tell to tell you to match the pairs so you should know which words come under what understanding that is summarizing interpretation classification comparing inter interfering relating extracting paraphrasing applying that is called as you know solving change to complete um, to teach to articulate analyzing that is connecting relating correlating illustrating uh, evaluating that is criticizing reframing judging appraising or prioritizing and create you know designing 
in the form designing modification role play or you know to collaborate to invent or to write so these are the uh, you know command verbs you can say which are used with the in the form of what in the form of given uh, const uh, given specific area so many times as i said in match the following you should be able to know this uh, pair so you should uh, keep on revising this command verbs okay going ahead now we can use you know we can summarize bloom's taxonomy so remembering i have given you very well that student can recall or remember the information they should be able to define you know list memorize same same thing but in a diff different way understanding the student should able to explain it applying the student should able to use the information in a new way analyzing student should able to distinguish with the help of different parts or between the different parts evaluating student should justify or a stand or a decision creating student should create a new point out of this a uh, point of view so this is how the bloom's taxonomy is used okay now we have next is uh, gagne's nine stages of learning okay so i just you know forgot to label this diagram this is cone of uh, sorry gagne's nine, uh, nine stages of learning or learning per stages so it starts with gaining informing stimulating okay gaining informing stimulating uh, presenting the stimulus provide the guidance elicit the performance provide the feedback assess the performance and enhance the retention so when i say gaining yes it is you know the learners is basically uh, it is uh, as per the learners interest informing it is discussing what will be taught okay stimulating that is you know to recall what is already known presenting to teach the lesson providing guidance that is allowing the teacher to facilitate the student practice eliciting the performance that is you know uh, having the learner complete a task was on what was taught providing feedback giving response assessing the performance that is to evaluate and enhancing the retention that is to provide the uh, you know activity to help the learners to remember the specific content you can say or specifically what was taught okay so this nine events of instruction or you can say stages of learning so you can have a different question and it was given by gagne's uh, gagne nine stages also you can count or nine events of instruction you can call coming next is you know uh, based on this yes you have uh, a questions on learning process okay as i said today also in today's uh, first shift there was a question on process learning process so learning process here reception expectancy retrieval semantic coding responding reinforcement retrieval and reinforcement and generalization so reception it means you know gaining attention expectancy it means understand informing the learners of the objective what is expected retrieval it means to recall semantic coding it means the learning the guidance okay responding it means you know feedback reinforcement providing feedback to the learner in the form of if the learner has done something good reward will be given okay or if the learner has not done something uh, means in something wrong a punishment will be provided then a retrieval and reinforcement it is basically additional performance uh, by the learner and generalization it talks about what it talks about various you know increasing the retention with more focus problems yes now learning disorders now this was a common question few days back so learning disorders you should know very well uh, dyslexia that is reading difficulty dyscalculia mathematical difficulty dysgraphia writing difficulty dyspraxia that is fine motor skills the movement is a difficulty dysphasia that is difficulty with the language auditory processing dis disorder that is difficulty hearing the differences between sounds and visual processing disorder that is visual information so this also comes with the help of uh, match the following or a specific question and here i have additionally added that what problem does it creates till now there was no question but i just want you to know go through it in any form the question comes you should be able to write it okay then coming to the next part is 
a type of uh, learn this was a question type of learning so what are the type of learning that is visual learning auditory learning intuitive learning inductive learning deductive learning uh, active learning reflective learning sequential learning or global learning so you have this visual it means pictures auditory means words and sounds intuitive it means insights inductive that is facts to generalization deductive is theory to individual facts active it means a physical in, uh, engagement that is motor skills reflective it means to introspect sequential it means in series and global it means you know holistic the whole at uh, whole thing to be learned then five types of learning so intellectual it means which is problem solving cognitive it means metacognition that is you know strategies for problem solving verbal it means facts of knowledge attitude it means actions and motor skills it means your physical skills so any type of question comes you should be able to answer this then we have uh, dale's cone of experience so yes this is was given by edgar dale so basically it provides teaching and learning model it is a teaching and learning model that allows the teacher to understand how to increase the retention of learners it can come in statement question also by involving the learners so it means that while the learner participates and gets involved in the process of learning uh, with the help of what expression or with the sensory organ so like for example 10% of what uh, people generally remember that is students generally remember 10% of what they read 20% of what they hear 30% of what they see 50% of what they see and hear 70% of what they say and write and 90% of what they do so it means that okay it this this includes what this includes evaluation creation designing analyzing that is concrete which they can see then demonstrating that is applying the practice and then defining that is this is abstract it goes from concrete to abstract okay so please remember this this was also a type of question in previous year question not in 20 to 21 but yes it is one of the question in previous year with respect to abstract to concrete okay sorry with respect to concrete to abstract fine so it goes from concrete level okay towards what towards the abstract level which we can visualize and which you know which cannot be which cannot but just a thought process can help the student to understand then Coming to next is approaches in education. Yes, there are questions on this. The first approach is behaviorism. That is, you know, passive organ, uh, organization who can be conditioned to learn the new behavior. Okay, that is law of exercise, repeating or law of effect. It is reinforcement. As I said, reinforcement in the form of reward or in the form of punishment. So if you're doing something good, reward it. If bad, punish it. Then gestalt psychology that is demonst which demonstrate the significance of perception it, it talks about what perception it showed that complex learning need not occur gradually through lengthy practice but you know with the help of insight also so show it believes whole is greater than some of its parts like for example human body there are cells tissues bones yet the sum of all these components creates what human body is greater than the sum of its parts okay so you can show the human body first and then you can take the students to its various part constructivism yes it is the active processing of information which helps the organization you know the individual to organize and to construct the knowledge that is in the form of uh, jen piaget's learning accommodate and assimilate okay next we have is idealism basically which is something which is you know uh, talking about knowledge spirit and mind and constitute reality okay the thinkers were fobel kant plato swami vidyanand okay vivekanand and arbindo i've shown you the first very third slide of the uh, topic which was talking about the main you know the concepts and their proponent naturalism it talks about something you know the reality the, that is basically nature is the source of all knowledge which the main proponents were Tagore, Rousseau and Herbert Spencer. Okay. Now, pragmatism, which is something which is very practical, that is John Dewey. According to him, it was an exper experimental learning or exper sorry, experiential learning is the a, a main concept of education. 
humanism that is welfare you can't talk about the uh, humanity rationalism that is you know a sense uh, definitely which is something which is very realistic and existentialism which talks about existence freedom and choice okay so these are various approaches of education which is important for you then coming to the next is comparison of pedagogy and ragogi and utagogi so it's pedagogy a learner dependent learner is dependent in this and ragogi adults are independent and utagogi adults the learners over here are interdependent so basically if you see pedagogy is in, driven by the teacher whereas andragogi is both adult and the teacher and utagogi the learner you know the teacher is the facilitator over here just so pedagogy it's like subject centered as well as teacher centered andragogy is uh, the problem centered whereas utagogy is proactive and problem centered so here basically um, in pedagogy external motivation or a push is required from the teacher whereas in andragogy and utagogy it is a internal and self self efficiency process okay so where in utagogy teacher is the capacitor builder in andragogy it is like a collaborator whereas in pedagogy it's like a director okay we have next is blended form of learning that is a learning you can say which is a combination of online and a face to face learning hybrid learning okay then we have traditional and fifth classroom traditional form where the teacher conducts the class and gives the homework activity whereas in flipped classroom the lecture is conducted but um, without you know all the activities are taken in in the classroom itself even if you know if you want to show some video clip to the student you won't tell them to go home and refer it you will show that show them in the class and you will encourage any doubts queries or you know you will make make sure that they are more much more interactive so uh, we will see the difference a traditional classroom is face to face linear one way and instructor control whereas flipped classroom is bended non linear a two way or you know learner control so here basically the in in the traditional classroom the learners are informed about the topic and the process of learning program schedule here the topic you know the are introduced to the topic and given study material and they are they are told to analyze and understand the content in traditional classroom the, the teachers give the lecture and make sure that the student takes the uh, and takes the student through various milestones whereas in flipped classroom the learning and understanding is within the peers or the activities are conducted in the guidance of the instructor in traditional classroom the study material is given on or after the classroom whereas it is given in the flipped classroom it is given before well and before in advance in traditional classroom as i said homework is given as a practice activity but here the learner reflects upon the learning discussion in the uh, of the act or the activities in the form of you know in the form of concepts which are taken in the classroom itself coming next is how the traditional classroom you know looks like how the flipped classroom look likes so traditional classroom that is it's a teacher directed a uh, lecture whereas in students sorry flipped classroom the lectures are video video recorded and the they can be watched inside as well as outside the classroom and the discussion can be done okay so this is you know this is the main difference you can you should know because there are some questions on this topics also now there are some quantitative and qualitative techniques also in under this so quantitative it means in the form of written oral examination practical examination how the students perform okay subjectively or in the oral or in the practical examination this is how it is judged quantitatively when i say qualitatively it is based on the observations and the interviews it is based on the checklist okay either in the form of rating scales de depending upon a judgment or an opinion or expression or it is a combination of the cumulative record about a child in a specific class or in a specific uh, you know academic year coming next is as i said deductive and inductive model so deductive model in teaching learning is the one, one where no new knowledge is given it is a method of verification uh, instruction that the child is you know gets ready with the information available and he uses it it's a quick process it encourages you know to the dependence on other sources also go through other sources but the activity scope is very less over here 
it's a downward process okay it down, it's a downward system whereas inductive as you said new knowledge it gives new knowledge it's a new method of discovery here the method of it is a method of teaching where the child you know gets a first hand experience though it is slow but it trains the mind and gives self confidence and initiative to the students it is full of activity and it is an upward process okay for thoughts and principles coming next is your domains very important three domains you have where again the questions do not come a straight forward question nowadays they have given you know internal questions that you they will give you the activities in the cognitive domain and they will tell you to arrange it in the sequence cognitive domain we have already done through bloom's taxonomy that is remembering understanding applying analyzing evaluating and creating so let's focus on the remaining two domains that is affective and psychomotor affective domain so in 2022 there was a question on affective domain okay they have they have given it in the form of you know uh, choose the correct option so they have given you that which of the following uh, activities are a part of affective domain and they gave gave you the list so you should remember this domains in the sequence so that is receiving responding valuing organizing conceptualizing and characterizing the, by values but a psychomotor consists of imitation manipulation precision articulation and naturalization so any of this can definitely be a part of a question so you should remember it very well okay then uh, in the next slides i have written everything in detail so cognitive domain it is basically thinking okay as i said we have done in bloom's taxonomy about recalling grasping application of knowledge breaking the down the information uh you know uh, uh, making the information come in one place and then evaluating the the way through which the learning has you know happened affective domain that is willingness to uh, listen willingness to participate to be involved to be or you know to to be uh, to educate an idea or to change the behavior whereas psychomotor domain talks about you know demonstration of a skill you know manipulation with the help of machinery equipment uh act accuracy in performing various acts articulation how efficiency or eff effectiveness you have through your writing to your speaking naturalization that is you know the way you adapt modify design the procedure and techniques then we have types of evaluation so types of evaluation basically your students get confused a lot in spite of knowing all the points with the concept they still make a mistake when the question is on norm reference or criterion reference and i said this topic is again repeated in the morning session also this topic was a part of your question so you should remember very well that placement evaluation is done to place the child it's a pre placement to place the child with his domain area the skill the subject skill and this is not the placement after you know for a job no this is the placement with respect to the student skill diagnosis it helps to understand the root cause formative it is you know it is a continuous feedback which helps the child to improve summative it is at the end norm reference where the child okay whether it is you know in comparison with other child how the child is performing and criteria with the help of the a specific uh, criteria a percentile or a score how is your child performing okay so let's see one by one formative as i said it is done throughout the the academic course it helps to identify gap and it helps to give the feedback and improve the child uh with the various you know with various with the help of various approaches and support uh, of child formative feedback is definitely you know assessment formative assessment is taken summative which is done at the end it is basically to understand what type of knowledge and skills about the subject the student knows and yes it is a cumulative assessment it took it it it, it goes on adding up so formative assessment is a it is during the activity whereas summative is at the end formative is about student learning whereas uh, the aim of summative is to evaluate the student learning formative provides feedback summative gives you know a result formative it can be taken you know it occurs many times during a course but here it is only a frequency is very few and limited uh can be used a wide range of questions whereas a summative can have you know a limited range of 
uh, format of questions fine any type of question can be come see the problem here is that students you know just you know just do not read between the lines and that's the reason they feel that you know the tough paper was tough it, if you read the theory very well understand it very well it becomes easier for you to attempt the questions it, I know it's lengthy, the syllabus is lengthy, but there is, you have to do it, okay? Norm reference, as I said, there is a comparison, okay? As performance comparison between the child and his classmates. Whereas in the criterion reference, there is a comparison between the knowledge and skills as per the determined level or a standard, okay? So be careful, here a lot of students get confused, the next is continuous and comprehensive evaluation. So it is nothing but a combination of formative for summative. So like for example, if you want to have a continuous improvement seen in your child, you can come with the formative and the summative type of evaluation, which is called as CCE, that is continuous and comprehensive evaluation. Okay, it is basically to diagnose what problem it has. Okay, it is it's nothing but a formal way Okay, in order to bring a evaluation in the system. Now, there is a topic called as computer ba assisted evaluation and based evaluation. Assisted, it means with the help of computer, you are assessing. That is, you can take an example of online mock test or online courses. That means computer assisted evaluation, the way the U uh, UGC NTA net conducts an examination. So assisted, where the computer is assessing the body to evaluate. Okay, with the help of, you know, with the help of uh, uh, getting the students, uh, reaching the centers and taking the test with the help of the system. Based evaluation, wherein you write the uh, uh, you give the examination, those papers are scanned and with the help of computer, computer-based evaluation, with the help of computers, you assess the, uh, if you do the evaluation. Then comes choice-based credit system. So now in 2022 also and 21, you know, small, small uh, questions from this topic. Like for example, what is the full form of CBCS? So it's choice-based credit system which offers, you know, a choices to the students with respect to core elective, okay, and skill-based courses, which definitely have, you know, convenient way of student to learn on, you know, the platform which will help them to give various, you know, skills. And yes, it is a combination of a practical or a theory um, subject, which is basically divided into three uh, areas. That is a core element, which is a compulsory subject a student has to learn. Then you have the elective course. Then you have, you know, the foundation course. Okay. So the grades here I have specifically written. It can anytime you can give this, get this grades and also points. So O stands for outstanding with a, uh, on a scale of 10 on 10. A plus stands for excellent scale of 9 on 10. Uh, a stands for very good. That is a scale of 8. B plus stands for 7. B stands for 6. C stands for 5. That is average and P stands for pass, that is four. And F or absent indicates, you know, a failure or absentism of a student. Now, yes, next we have this digital uh, phase. Now, Swayam, in the 2021, there was a question on Swayam. So what is the full form of Swayam? It is definitely an e-platform with an objective of accessibility, equity and quality which was you know launched on 7th sorry 9th of july 2017 by the ex president mr mukherjee it is a digital platform now year again in 2022 there was a question on one of the shift had a question on full form of moves that is massive open online course even moodle there was a full form of moodle also it hosts the courses from 7th sorry class 9 to post graduation level so objectives, it is basically making this, uh, there should be no, no one should be deprived of education and the digital divide should, you know, not ensure that there is a loss. So definitely there has to be uh, a, a good amount of a source or resources which will help the students to gain knowledge. So course features of SOEM, I have given this in the form of statements also. Or if you want to make it a little bit easier, I have given in the form of diagrammatic presentation. So there are four quadrants, assessment, e-tutorial, e-content, discussion forum. 
these quadrants okay uh, this the, the these are the quadrants which comes under swayam so quadrant 1 is the e tutorial where the content is available quadrant 2 is sorry e tutorial based on video and audio content quadrant 2 is e content where your uh, content is available in the form of various files that is a pdf a text or ebook Quad, uh, quadrant 3 is the web uh, resources that is links with respect to the various uh, research paper journals is available and quadrant fourth is a self-assessment. It's like an assignment which a student can take in the form of filling the blanks, match the following, short answers, long answers. Then national, there are nine national coordinators of SOEM. This I have specifically made a slide. So I have written each coordinator as well as their full form. That is acronym is given, full form is given and their role is given. So it is AICTE, NEPTIL, okay, so UGC, CEC, NCRT, NIOS, IGNU, I am, I am uh, Bangalore and NITTTR. So you should be knowing this all very well. As I said, the acronym should be learned very well because in 2022, what I saw was acronyms were given almost. Okay, so students are supposed to know the acronyms very well. So uh, you have to keep on revising if you have, you know, if your examination is in phase two. So now onwards, you can keep on revising so that it will help you to remember all the acronyms well. Now, Swayam, as I said, the whole thing I have, you know, Swayam, what is the full form when it was launched with what principle? What is the objective? Again, in diagrammatic presentation, I have kept it. Uh, then what are the uh, subjects? Registration. It's basically, you know, if you want a certification, a nominal fees is required for registration and the credits will be given. It was started in 2016. The courses, which type of courses are available starting with computer science, language, mathematics, management, general uh, courses, library and even education. And what type of, you know, like for example, disciplines. What are the various disciplines under SOEM? Sorry. So disciplines are also there in the form of computer science, that is computer science, language, mathematics. Then next is SOEM Prabha, that is 34 direct to home channels, the high quality program which is by uh, GSAT, that is Geostationary 15. It, uh, uh, the objectives are equal access, school education, higher education, life classes, curriculum-based courses, competitive preparation. Here, yes, uh, the content is, you know, published every at least four hours, five times, two, five to six times is repeated in a daytime uh, so that students can learn at any convenient time as per their availability. It is linked, uplinked by BSAC, Gandhi Nagar, that is Bharat, Bhaskaracharya Institute for Space Application and Geoinformatics. They, these courses are, the content, the contents are provided by NEPTEL, IITs, UGC, CC, IGNU, NCRT, all these acronyms I have written in the previous slide. You can refer it out. InFlipNet Center maintains the web portal, that is Information and Library Network. The curriculum-based contents are for postgraduate as well as graduate students. Disciplines here are given like that. Okay, arts, science, commerce, performing arts, humanity, engineering, medicine, agriculture, law, technology, etc. Next comes is moves. As I said, full form was given. It's a based platform, basically, you know, for a distance education. It, established, it was established in 2008, but it gained momentum in 2012. Then Neptil. That is with the help, it is the courses are with the help of IITs, IISCs and other platforms when you can register and get the course free of cost. Offline and online method of learning. So yes, offline is basically traditional method. You can say it is conventional method, more, uh, no health issues. Physically, we are present. Strict rules and regulations need to be followed. No self-paced learning requires more time and money and no not so costly, though it is requiring time and money, but it is not so costly. Online, yes, it is one of the modern or non-conventional uh, type of learning. Bad health issues, you know, maybe continuous sitting or, you know, screen in the front of eyes can, issue, can create an issue. Need not be physically present. No strict rules uh, and guidelines. Self-face it is. Do not require more money and time. It, uh, that is... Though it does not require more money, but yes, it is one of the costliest method of learning. Okay, now coming to some important bodies. That is Constitutorium for Educational edu Communication. 
so uh, see the reason you know there are no direct questions but yes either in ICT or in higher education there are topics from this so what is the basic objective of CC that is you know uh, guidance it is uh, conducting the educational programs uh, active involvement in the forum promoting experimenting the technology so you have to learn this uh, and especially when it was been form founded the acronym the full form and its objective because i've seen in either in teaching aptitude or in uh, ict or in communication or in higher education you can get the questions on this topic Next is Diksha, that is an initiative by Ministry of Education, which was launched in September 2017, a portal which is designed, you know, basically uh, available for students who want to connect with teacher community. It offers courses, worksheets, okay. There are more than 80,000 ebooks which are available for 12 standard students in multiple languages. You have to just scan the QR code and you get an access to this, you know, a plethora of learning. EPG e Partshala, which was started an online portal for postgraduate courses, which has an initiative, which under the initiative of 700 ebooks and 68 postgraduate courses with high quality of contents, uh, videos, illustration, tutorials. Next, we have is E Partshala, which was started in November 2015, an initiative by Ministry of Government, uh, which show showcases the or disseminates all the educational e resources. It also provides digital uh, textbooks for the classes. It conducts workshop uh, con uh, and it has exhibition contents, contests, sorry, and festivals. Yes, it is an initiative by initiative under National Mission on Education through ICT so that the students, you know, get all the educational material in the form of video, audio, uh, visuals. The National Digital Library of India that is NDL started in 19 started on 19 June 2018 with an discipline you know from schools to postgraduate it is a purple platform for uh, everyone teachers students you know professional researchers which is 24 by 7 and various learning resources are available at this platform each short sindhu which started in March 1991 a library for e-journals factual uh, you know uh, information bibliographies uh, all academic institutions like central and state government and colleges can avail the services after the registration over here neptune yes which enhanced the uh, which is an initiative found funded by ministry of human resource development and, and coordinated by iit madras uh, yes, it is the project is, you know, basically uh, it put recorded lectures which are taught by various uh, institutes uh, in the form of, you know, educational channel. Okay. It was initiated in 2003 by seven uh, bodies that is IITs, Bombay, Delhi, Kanpur, Kharagpur, Madras, Guwahati, Ruki and Indian Institute of Science. Uh, it began offering the courses along with certification. Okay. And the credits were also given or the transfer of credit was possible. Virtual Labs, which was set in 2010, basically founded by Government of India, which is, you know, uh, it's conducted by IIT Delhi and more 12 participating institutes. This is uh, expanding the opportunity for the students as well as teachers, you know, to collaborate under a common platform. E Granthale, that is nothing but, you know, offers books and curriculum. Uh, with in you know with very high content high content quality or a uh, curriculum with for various subjects across the country and e yantra is nothing but a uh, initiative you know which was set up by uh, iits uh, it is basically a competition which gives you know a scope to the students to or even you know definitely to all the to everyone in order to showcase their talents, you know, with the help of such programs every year. So, yes, this is all which we have done for teaching aptitude, that is for unit number one. In 60 minutes, whatever possible, it was a quick revision so that, you know, whatever information is needed, you can recall it and be ready for your upcoming examination. Okay. So, all the best for your papers, everyone. And uh, stay tuned. We'll be trying to post all such videos one by one. So that it will help, it, it will provide a great help to you in order to revise everything and in one video itself. Okay, thank you.